Welcome to Paratalk with the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers. Hair-raising, spine-tingling evidence covering the full supernatural spectrum. UFOs, cryptozoology, paranormal encounters. Have an experience to share? Call now, 865-264-0448. That's 865-264-0448. And now, here are your hosts, the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers, Stephen Brown, Steve Wiseman, Andrea Brown. Welcome to Paratalk. All right, guys, we're back. We are back. It's All right, it's been, been a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We've had stuff come up, you know, like work and being life. tired and yeah, life. life oh, and... I've not been tired. I've just had life. Okay, well, I've been tired. <laughs> yeah, I, I stay tired. Uh, so, um, anything happened interesting with you in the last little bit since we were on here last? Um. Not really, no. you know. I mean, just football. Fo- uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. I was fixing to say football season is starting, yes. and I'm an absolute football mom. And yeah, yeah, we're at the field a twice lot. a week now. Yes, watching because our freshman is able to dress out with the varsity, and yep. this is totally exciting, and which is very cool. Yes. Um, I do. We do need to mention that obviously Steve's not with us. Yeah, Steve's not with us tonight. Uh, but we also do need to mention that we have some cool things coming up. Uh, we're adding microphones to the studio. Yes, we so are. So we are going to be having some guests joining us. You know, this is so exciting because, you know, we're just starting out on this podcast, mm-hmm. which is something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, with the people that we've met in the, you know, through our work, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much that they can bring to, to this. I mean, you know, not only is it paranormal, Mm -hmm. but which a lot of it is. Yeah. The majority of it is. The majority of it is. But, you know. I guess it, it's just it's just awesome that we've met so many people who are willing mm-hmm. to contribute to this. Yeah. And everybody that we've talked to is super excited about oh, yeah. this. Yeah, like uh, one of the guests that we're going to be having uh, is a guy named Doug Cox. Doug owns um, Screamville Haunted Attraction out in Coryton, Tennessee. Which is an amazing attraction. Yes, yes. So we will have him on here before Halloween, and we'll be talking all about... Screenville. Yeah. And what got Doug into wanting to do haunted attractions? Yeah. I mean, who, who, out of the blue, I guess, uh, surely it's not out of the blue. Surely there's been some thought process of thinking, man, I want to scare the crap out of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and here we're the people that want to be, have the crap scared out of us. Right. So, you know, this kind of, fr- this friendship works. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. And then we're going to have, uh, Mike Howard. Yes. Mike's going to come join us. Absolutely. Uh, and talk about all of his different, you know, things that's happened in his life with the paranormal. Yes. Um, and we may have somebody come in and help uh, do some guest spots on uh, some UFOs. Yes. We, we got some UFO stuff going on. Um, we've got a, um, a new family member that's going to be joining us yes. on some podcasts. And uh, a... Well, I'd say an old family member because, you know, my little brother. Your little brother, Tyler. Tyler's going to come join us for a podcast. I mean, he's, uh, he's been on an investigation yeah, with us. He's still a noob. Yeah, he's still a noob, <laughs> but, I mean, he had some experiences. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, you know, honestly, I have to give Tyler props because mm-hmm. he did, I mean, it got freaky. Oh, and, absolutely. And he didn't tuck tail and run away. Right. So, yeah, anyway, we got lots of things coming up in the future. It's going to be exciting. Yes, it's going to be very exciting. So, I, mean, I guess off the bat, I want to do a new, a new little segment. Oh, yeah. What's yes. that? And on this day in history. I love history. You love history? I do love history. Okay, well, here's one. Okay. okay. Uh, this is from all the way back to 2008. What? Yes. No. Mm-hmm. Can I remember that? Mm, I probably not. <laughs> I bet you will. Okay. Okay. On this day, 
August 27th, mm-hmm. 2008. Yes. Barack Obama becomes the first African American to be nominated by a major political party for president of the United States. Oh, really? Yes. I did not realize that was. Yeah, it was on this day. Oh, well, you learn something new every you day. You do. You learn well, something new. Unless every... you actually knew that. Right. Did you know that? I, I mean, I knew that he had, he was the first African American president or person to be nominated for president. Mm-hmm. I just didn't realize it was today. It was today. And in another 2008. thing. Yes. And another thing on this day uh-huh. in 2003. Okay, yes. Um, Mars passed by the closest it had ever passed by in almost 60,000 years oh. to Earth. And you know what? That totally explains why Xander is the way he is. Because he was born a month later. It's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Those planets were really off kilter. Yeah. Um, and another thing, uh, I can't find it now. I was reading it earlier. Um, but uh, petroleum was discovered on this day in 1776, I believe. In yeah, I don't remember that. Titusville, Pennsylvania, if if I'm right. I, like I said, I've totally lost it on here. It, it left the page I was on. Um, that's really cool, though. I mean, that is you really know, cool. You just don't, that's something that you just don't think of. Right. And some celebrity birthdays. Yes. We like birthdays. We like birthdays. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Nice. Born on this day in 1908 and died in 1973, the year I was born. Oh, what a quinky dink. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, another one, Barbara Bach. She was a Bond girl. Oh. Mm-hmm. Is she's 70 years old. Nice. Yeah, born happy, on this day. Happy birthday. And another big birthday. What? Wee Herman. Oh my gosh. Yes. yes. Today, Paul Rubin's birthday. Who doesn't love Pee Wee Herman? I know. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm not even going to an attempt. <laughs> yeah, because you could probably do it really, really well. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, if we had your brother Jamie here. Oh, yeah. Jamie would be all up on it. Yeah, he would. <laughs> uh, and I guess on some sad news, uh, a death. No. There, which there's been several. Yeah. But only one that I even care to mention. What's that? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, yeah. Stevie Ray Vaughan died on this date in 1990. An so, amazing musician. Amazing. I mean... You wasn't big into blues. You're still not big no, into blues. Not, but not I have bluesy. I have, you know, wore you out on some Steve yes. Ray Vaughan going yes. down the roads. I've yeah. I've had my share of some some Stevie Ray Vaughan, which I can appreciate it, you yeah. know. And he was amazing. I'm not amazing. one to, to diss him any music. So yeah. So yeah. That was on this day. August twenty seventh. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like uh, that segment. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, it's something new, something else for us to talk about, and you know, maybe bore people to death with, or just but give them some knowledge, enlighten we're, them. We're giving you some knowledge. Yes, useless information. Useless. Okay, <laughs> uh, and some some more maybe useless information, but I mean, we're just full uh, of it. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but I loved it, and you loved it. Okay, so. This new this show that started I guess last season. Mm-hmm. Um, we just watched the the what was it six episodes? Season? Yeah, season one. Yeah, season one. Uh, Channel Zero. Oh, Candle Cove. My goodness, that show was amazing. It was so good. It was trippy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it'll. It's awesome, and I, I highly recommend it to everyone just because, especially if you were a child of the 80s. Yes. Because it flashbacks. Yes. To 88. Yeah, it goes back from, it goes from right now, or, you know. Current, 20, present day. Yeah, yeah, current, present day, back to 1988. And it goes back and, and forth, and. All throughout the entire series. And, and it doesn't get you confused. No, no, it's it's not flashbacks to the point of where you're confused. Where a lot of shows and movies do yeah. the flashbacks, and you're like, why did they even show that? Right. You don't. No, this was totally valid flashbacks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so everybody that that hasn't checked out 
Channel Zero Candle Cove. Check that show out. Season two is getting ready to start up. I saw commercials for it the other day on Sci Fi. Oh, so excited. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yes. It's going to be awesome. So, I guess on to topic for today. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about haunted objects and Ooh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Creepy, um, creepy, creepy. Yeah, everybody knows John Zaffis, uh-huh. you know, the haunted collector. You know, he had the show on Sci Fi, and now they're showing it on um, Destination America. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we watched it. Some of it last, but no, I don't even. Friday remember. night, I think it's Friday night. We watched some, probably. Yeah, and I think your little dog's one. <laughs> Go ahead and let your little dog in, so she doesn't knock on the door okay, all episode on. long. So yeah, we watched uh, uh, Haunted Collector. So John Zaffis, if everyone, for anyone who doesn't know, John Zaffis has this haunted museum where he has tons of haunted objects and he you know keeps them out from being in circulation to where they don't cause any havoc for people um and a new group that well they have them but they're not keeping them out away from everybody is greg and dana newkirk they have a haunted traveling museum that would be one of the most awesome things yet Terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they have several haunted dolls. Um, they even have Billy the Idol. You know, he's a Billy little Idol. Stuff. No, no, not Billy Idol. Oh, oh. not the not the rock guy. Oh, no, okay. no, they don't own him. They gotcha. own Billy the Idol. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have a Dybbuk box that has never been opened and will never be open, they say. Can you tell me what a Dybbuk box is? A Dybbuk. A Dybbuk. A Dybbuk box. What is a Dybbuk box? A Dybbuk box is a box that is very, very old Uh that has items in it that are cursed. And they put these items into this box. Right. And if anyone opens the box, it's supposed to curse whoever opens the box. And I'm pretty sure they are not even going to test that possible theory. No, I'm sure they won't. Yeah, no. I wouldn't. Uh, so that, yeah, they said they would never open the box. But, you know, I mean, just having those things, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's pretty cool that they have those things. It's like Zach Baggins has his little haunted museum I would now. love to go. I mean, uh, To any, see his stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we watched one last night uh, that we're going to be doing an upcoming episode on. Um, oh, we're gosh. gonna do we're gonna do a, a true crime episode. Yes, and we're gonna be talking about Ed Gein. Uh huh. And like Crazy. Zach, he acquired the um, cauldron. The cauldron. Thank you. <laughs> that Ed Gein used to you know cook people's hearts and livers up in. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. So, stay tuned. That's going to be probably our next episode. That yeah, be probably. Out. All right. So haunted auctions, objects. <laughs> 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 um, so if you don't know that that objects can be haunted and cause chaos, they can. I mean, they can move. They can cause you to have nightmares. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can make you sick. Yep. And they've even, some of them, been known to cause death. Um. I mean, it's, I guess the ones in those instances, Mm -hmm. I mean, the means of, I guess, what am I trying to say? The means of death Mm -hmm. are way too coincidental to be not connected to that object. Right, right. If that makes sense. (laughs) That does. I mean, yeah, I mean, because it's just like, you know, Houses that have nothing go on in them, mm-hmm. and then you purchase an antique, and then from a, or something from a flea market, even. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, uh, I love antiques, and mm-hmm. I, if if I could afford it all, by George, I would be buying all kinds of antiques. Mm-hmm. However, there is that flip side of what could you be bringing into your right. house? I mean, it's just like in our house right now. Mm-hmm. In our house right now, we have several, several old mirrors. And, you know, it's funny because you, people just bestow these mirrors yeah, they to do. us. They, they, every, I think everyone we know that 
comes in contact with an old mirror, they They're give like, it to hey, us. You want an old mirror? I'm like, I, sure, I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> we have several. I mean, I would say there's. I mean, probably, granted, they're not put up. No, they're not put up. Uh, well, they're not on display. They are put up. Yeah, they're not. But they're like, not on display, right? Because honestly, I don't know what could be attached to those mirrors. Right. Yeah. That. I mean, especially with the. Uh, stigma mm-hmm. behind mirrors and pauntings. Yeah. You don't really want to yeah. test it. Yeah, you know, we have the two boys here in the house, so, I mean, we don't have those things out to where they can come in contact with And, them. you know, we got a teenager that spends enough time in the bathroom, so we don't need 10 million mirrors around you're for him to exactly, stop every single one. You're exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the last thing he needs is more things to look at himself in. Yeah. He's not uh, terribly conceited, but he's got to check his hair all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. All right. So, I guess we will move on. Um, so, since you guys know that we are doing, you know, our our episode on haunted objects, I guess we could give you a hint of what we're going to have our little top three about. So, do you think we should do that? Should we give them a hint? Mm, okay. All right. We'll give you a hint. See if this tells you anything. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> or, or how about this? What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so today, our Paratalk Paranormal Top Three Countdown. Haunted Dolls. <laughs> and we'll jump right into it. Now it's time for your Paratalk Paranormal Top 3. Number 3. Harold the Doll. Harold the Doll. Alright, so I guess we will give... Andrea, some time to talk about Harold here. Okay. Harold the Haunted Doll. It was 2003 when a man visited a flea market like any other flea market. He saw a doll, a male doll, being placed down by an old man. He thought the boy doll was charming, albeit distressed looking. He asked the old man what he wanted for it. The old man was hesitant. It's very old, he said, and eventually said he'd give it up for $20. The two men agreed on the exchange, and the happy new owner of the charming old doll walked away. Suddenly, the old man came running back after the new owner of the doll, insisting that he couldn't let him walk away without telling him the full details of Harold the Haunted Doll. It's brought an eerie presence into my home, the old man explained. He also told the younger man that his son died only a few years after being given the doll as a gift. Not only that, but after his son's death, the old man would hear singing and laughing coming from his room, where there was no one but Harold the Haunted Doll. I took it to a priest, and he told me to burn it, the old man explained, but the doll was resistant to fire. It just looked even more worn after the attempt to destroy it. The younger man decided he'd still take the doll home with him, assuming there was nothing to worry about. It was just an old man with a vivid imagination, he assumed. Two days after bringing Harold the haunted doll home, however, his cat died and he began having severe migraines. Also, he too began hearing the voices of children laughing and singing when there was no one home but himself. If you want to learn more about Harold the haunted doll, his new owner has dedicated a website to, his, to this strange story. You can read more about it online. He doesn't seem to be all that afraid, but then again, from the looks of it, he keeps Harold in a suitcase. All right. Harold. Mm -hmm. And he's a creepy looking little little doll. Uh, Aren't they all? (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, Harold looks like he was put together last minute. Yes, he he looks like he's been put through the ringer for sure. And I would say after being 
uh, burned or attempted, mm-hmm. then you know he's he's gonna look a bit rough. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, you know, I've seen Harold the Doll on different, you know, paranormal shows. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly anything that he has done. Right. You know, I mean, other uh, than the, other than you know, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess, you know, there's, I guess there's different, you know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I've not read anything other than, you know, this type Mm -hmm. of activity, you know, being scared of it and a couple of, you know, maybe coincidental deaths. Right. Right. Which, you know, being the cat and then, you know, the son. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we don't have that full backstory of, you know. Of some of the other more famous yeah, haunted dolls. Right. And then, you know, did it move other stuff? Do you know, was were these the only instances that made right. it haunted? Right. Who knows? All right. So, number three. Harold the Haunted Doll. On to number two. Annabelle, the possessed doll. Annabelle. All right, Annabelle. Annabelle is a Raggedy Ann doll, contrary to the Contrary movies. to the movies where yes, which is, she's this porcelain-looking yes. doll that Annabelle is not. Right, and... I had a Raggedy Ann doll. Mm-hmm. So, um, my sister had. Yeah, she had I mean, Raggedy know, Ann and Andy. I don't know any girl in that at my age that didn't have a Raggedy Ann doll of some sort. Anyway, Annabelle is a Raggedy Ann doll alleged by demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren to be haunted. The doll resides in a glass box at the Warren's Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut. The story served as the inspiration for the films Annabelle in 2014 and Annabelle Creation in 2017. Annabelle has been compared to Robert the Doll and was described in Gerald Brittle's 2002 biography of Ed and Lorraine Warren, the demonologist. According to claims originating from Ed and Lorraine Warren, a student nurse was given the Raggedy Ann doll in 1970, but after the doll behaved strangely, a psychic medium told the student the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. Supposedly, the student nurse and her roommate first tried to accept and nurture the spirit-possessed doll. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) That's funny. Nurture it. Nurture it. But eventually became frightened by the doll's malicious behavior and contacted the Warrens, who removed the doll to their museum after pronouncing it demonically possessed. Texas State University Assistant Professor of Religious Studies Joseph Laycock says most skeptics have dismissed the Warrens Museum as, quote-unquote, full of off-the-shelf Halloween junk, dolls and toys, books you could buy at any bookstore. Laycock calls the Annabelle legend an interesting case study in the relationship between pop culture and paranormal folklore, and speculates that the demonic doll, trope popularized by the films such as Child's Play, Dolly Dearest, and The Conjuring, likely emerged from early legends surrounding Robert the Doll as well as Twilight Zone, as a Twilight Zone episode entitled Living Doll. Laycock suggests that the idea of demonically possessed dolls allow modern demonologists to find supernatural evil in the most banal and domestic of places. Commenting on publicity for the Warren's Occult Museum coinciding with the film release of The Conjuring, science writer Sharon A. Hill said that many of the myths and legends surrounding the Warrens have seemingly been of their own doing, and that many people may have difficulty separating the Warrens from their Hollywood portrayal. Hill criticized sensational press coverage of the Warren's Occult Museum and its Annabelle doll. She said, like real-life Ed Warren, real-life Annabelle is actually far less impressive. Oh, (laughs) snap. Boom. (laughs) Of the supernatural claims made about Annabelle by Ed Warren, Hill said, we have nothing but Ed's word for this and also for the history and origins of the objects in the museum. Yeah, and that's why... Annabelle is number two on the list and not number one because I mean honestly all you have are Ed's words right I mean I'm not going to test you know I'm I'm gonna if I 
ever, ever get the fantastic opportunity to go and visit their museum, I'm not going to test opening up a case. No, no. Or taunting and, it. No. But, I mean, you know, that's the thing about the Warrens, So I mean, especially I, Ed. Not so much Lorraine, but especially Ed. He, well, and because of the other instances that have, I guess, proved that he can be a little... Shady. Yeah. For, just to just say it nicely, shady. Yeah. You know, I mean... We've we've discussed this before. We have. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's all about the money, money. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> all right. You're welcome for that. All. Yeah. All right. So now, since Annabelle <clears throat> didn't make number one. Right. Who is who number is? one? Right, let's find out. Number one. Robert, the haunted doll. Robert, the haunted ah, doll. As previously mentioned in the Annabelle story. And this doll, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Scares the bejeebus. Yes. This doll, I mean, Andrea's going to read the story for you. Let's you, give you guys the, the info on Robert the doll. Robert the doll is not a doll to mess with. No. In any means. No. You, I will n- not snuggle him. No. No, Robert, <laughs> Robert don't take no shit. I mean, Robert, you have to be polite, too. Yes. And Andrew's going to let you know that. All right. So take it away. <clears throat> so, Robert, otherwise known as Robert the Doll, Robert the Haunted Doll, or Robert the Enchanted Doll, is a doll that was once owned by Key West painter and author Robert Eugene Otto. The doll is alleged to be cursed. The doll is currently located at the East Martello Museum. Supposedly, Otto was given the doll in 1906 by a Bahamian servant who practiced black magic and voodoo. Otto's parents often heard him talking to the doll. At first, they assumed that Otto was simply answering himself in a changed voice, but later claimed to believe the doll was actually speaking. Neighbors claimed to have seen the doll moving from window to window when the family was out. Otto died in 1974. The doll is annually rotated to the old post office and custom house in October. Strange activity in the museum supposedly increases during such times. The doll was shown at TAPSCON, a paranormal convention held in Clearwater, Florida, in May of 2008. This was the first time that it had left Key West, Florida in its then 104 years of existence. And the doll is currently located at the East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. All right, Robert the doll. And just a little more information on Robert the doll. Robert, anytime you go to see Robert, you have to ask his, ask his permission to even take a picture of him. If you don't, bad things will happen to you. People have had car wrecks on the way back. They've had, they think that that failed marriages, divorces, sicknesses in family are all tied to taking pictures of Robert without his permission. Well, I'm going to do a little bit more of a backstory here. Go right ahead, yeah. It's the curse of Robert. Okay, yep. And this is a this was from a, a an, another website, mm-hmm. and um, I'm reading it in from the their author's perspective. their perspective. I snapped a photo of Robert the doll before reading that he puts curses on anyone who takes his photograph. Uh oh, surely it's just a myth. I thought. Curious, I began reading about the doll's history. In 1903, Robert was given to four-year-old Jean Otto, who lived in Key West. As Jean grew up, he blamed everything bad that happened on the doll. By the time Jean was married, Robert had taken the blame for a lifetime of lies, misdeeds, and mischief. Some say Robert's face had begun to change by the time Jean died in 1974, that his eyes grew more expressive. People insisted that the doll moved around and could be heard giggling behind their backs. Many who came in contact with Robert experienced bad luck, as if the doll was getting even for all the years he had been made a scapegoat. The curse of Robert the doll grew into such a well-known legend in Key West that whenever things went wrong, locals would simply shrug and say, 
blame it on Robert. But Robert's real fame came when the Chucky horror film series came out, as they were said to have been modeled on the real life story of Robert the Doll. There are many theories about why Robert behaves the way he does. Some believe. <laughs> Sorry. Some believe it's an ancient curse. Others say it is voodoo. Still, others insist that Gene Otto's ghost has returned to the doll whom he loved so much. The museum cats seem to believe in Robert's dark powers. They keep their distance when staring up at the glass east, in the glass case in East Martello Museum where Robert is enthroned. People, on the other hand, tend to doubt the legend and have suffered the consequences. Letters scattered at Robert's feet and tacked up on an adjacent wall are testimonials from dozens of unbelievers who were cursed by Robert the Doll, such as this one. Since our visit to the museum, we've been under a dark cloud. I began to develop a rather severe toothache. Two days later, Hurricane Charlie cut our vacation so short, and we joined the parade of evacuees leaving the islands. We were evacuated from our vacation spot three days early with my mouth in tremendous pain. My sister-in-law was also having female health issues. We were all forced to make alternate travel arrangements on the run. My sister-in-law lives in Clearwater. After a problem-laden and horrendous trip, she finally got home only to be evacuated from there too. She packed up her two cats and headed for her parents' house in Winter Haven and ended up in the middle of the storm there. They lost power for two days. When we arrived in Miami for our flight back to Indianapolis, the plane broke and they had to find a different one for us. The following day, back in Indiana, I went to the dentist to learn that my tooth had an abscess and I had to have a root canal. Last night, we had a huge thunderstorm. Our house was hit by lightning, not once, but twice. We were unplugging things, but not fast enough. We lost three TVs and a large satellite dish. The first hit, which sounded like a gunshot in the house, took one large TV and the satellite dish, and the second hit got two more TVs. Again, the sound was horribly frightening. Please do me a favor and tell Robert that we did not mean to anger or offend him, and we're sorry if we did. His, his photo did turn out good, so he sat very nicely for me. Would he like it back? Yours sincerely, Cindy Live. As for me, well, Robert and I were introduced several days ago, and so far I've suffered no ill effects. But then, I'm not taking any chances. Like the cats, I choose to believe. Check prices for accommodations in QS, blah, blah, blah. All right, so, people have bad experiences when they snap photos of Robert without asking his permission. I mean, it's, you know, there are stories on top of stories on top of stories. Absolutely. About and, that. you know, they've, they've got a picture on this and it's all the letters to Robert apologizing for taking his picture without his, um, without asking his permission. It, it actually says hundreds of letters have been sent to the museum by visitors who beg Robert's forgiveness and ask him to remove his curse. Wow. That's scary shit. It is. I mean, who in the world would ever think that something could be that dangerous? Right. You know. A doll. A doll. Yeah. And, and you know, it's kind of funny, though. You know, you actually see pictures of Robert. And I would assume that, you know, whoever took these pictures got his permission. Yeah. Or if they didn't, then I'd like to know what happened to them. Right. Yeah. You know, but he looks. He looks like a. He looks he, very so innocent. You yeah, know, he's it, like a little sailor. Yeah, he's dressed in a little sailor's uniform, but he looks like he's made out of foam almost. Yeah, the it's way it's a very he, unique look on him. Yeah, and created by a, a, a voodoo priestess or Which something. Which kind of makes yeah. sense that if that's, you know. It, I mean, could you imagine, like, what they used to make it out? Yeah, I wonder what's inside Robert. I don't know. I'm not willing to test it. Come on. Ah, no. Let's dissect Robert. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. Oh. Will no. He, will he give us permission to dissect him and see if there's, like, chicken feathers in him or something? Mm, probably not. It could be some KFC. You ain't right. <laughs> you so ain't right. <laughs> All right. I apologize for the dogs in that last one. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think if, if you've listened to our <laughs> podcast, you're 
grown used to hearing the dog, the barking dogs. We love our puppies. We love our puppies, so they're occasionally going to bark. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's about all we have for this episode. I think We're it is. We're going to cut it short, and you guys won't be, you know, maybe you'll have time to listen to this on a commute. And if you do, we so appreciate it. And as always, <laughs> you can the find The puppies it. say bye. Yeah, the puppies say bye. But as always, you can find us on Podbean. You can find us on iTunes. Uh, these are going to be uploaded onto uh, YouTube. And there will be a link on our Facebook. Yes. So... From give us some us. feedback. Yeah, give us some feedback, guys. I mean, anything that you want us to talk about, shoot us a message. Let us know. We'll talk about it. If you have questions about things in the paranormal field, question if, us. If we'll, I'm too long-winded, let me know. Yeah. God knows she talks all the time. Hush your mouth. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> um, until next time. And don't forget, we got uh, guests coming up here real soon. Um, we've got uh, some true crime episodes coming up soon. Yeah, hopefully we can get some stuff in here to keep you guys entertained, where you keep coming back and listening. Hey, and you know what? It is entertaining to me. Yeah, it gives us something to do. <laughs> we love it. So whether we get you guys listening or not, you know, it's giving us something to do. And, and we appreciate and you. We appreciate every one of you that listen. We really do. Um, and if you want to share our podcast on your Facebook page or you know, on Twitter or any any form of social media that you use, go right and ahead. Don't forget, if you have any story you would like to share, yeah, feel Just, free to contact us. And if you want to be on air, we will put you on air. Yeah, we're, we'll have it set up where you can call us and we can have you right here live with us through Skype. And if you want to be anonymous, you can... Feel free to just leave your story and no name. Yep. All right. Until next time, I'm Steven. I'm Andrea. And you've been listening to Paratalk. And that's all, folks. Listening to Paratalk with Easton Seeker Seekers, the new perspective in Paranormal Talk Radio. Hey, it's Stephen from Paratalk. Do you have a story to share? Call us at 865 264 0448 to explain your paranormal experience or to share your favorite ghost story, or to even give us a topic you'd like us to discuss. We understand if you want to keep anonymous, so the choice is yours to share your name with your story. So call 865-264-0448 now, and have your experiences heard on the next episode of Paratalk, 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 Paratalk.